Joe Rogan, a celebrity podcaster, has no shame in being a big hater of the vegan diet. Just keep going, get off that f***ing vegan diet and keep going. I'm either going to go hunting and I'm going to never eat meat again, I'm going to become a vegan, or I'm going to be a hunter. And I decided to be a hunter. And one of the reasons why I decided to be a hunter is I realized I don't like factory farming. I think it's f***ed up. You don't know what you're getting with that. No, you, you got to have egg. good, though. Egg bacon. Those, those sausage patties so are good. quite They're tasty. so nice. The McGriddle is brilliant. basically candy. It's yeah, brilliant. God. It's candy with candy meat. Candy and a foil it's fish. It's very good. It's very good. I like it. I feel good when I eat it. Eddie, factory farming is a goddamn crime. Factory farming is a goddamn crime. A creature that just wants to live, and it's a chicken. She's talking about chicken. Gonna Someone's going to murder her. But to her, this is not I can funny. see you smiling and laughing. We have a few tests from a few people that have done this carnivore diet. We have some people that have done the vegan diet and have had real hard problems with that diet. Yeah, but let's just let me just say one thing, because to throw the word vegan on something, that does not make it a healthy diet. But when you say organic, mm -hmm. no pesticides, whole food, plant-based diet, that's what I roll with. In your head, when you're doing it, when you're pulling the trigger, you're not having what's going on in your mind. Well, you you only are hunting these mature animals that have already passed on their genes. You also are recognizing that if you're not killing these things, they're not. It's not like they're going to live forever. You're yeah, just I mean, someone who enjoys eating plants instead of animal products. That's just your diet. It doesn't become a fucking religion with you. No, I mean, look, it's not my place to pass judgment on anybody else. It doesn't become a fucking religion with you. No. But has he finally woken up and changed his righteous opinion? On December 6, 2019, he released a video titled, I think you can definitely be healthy and be a vegan. Now I'll give the credit where credit is due because Joe's a smart guy, right? But when it comes to the uh, subject of veganism, he is barely cracking the surface. And to be quite honest, I think he needs to do a lot more research and be educated before making these wild claims. So let's break down these misconceptions that Joe brought up in his video. I don't think cutting meat out is the move. Uh, I'm pretty sure veganism is one of the most efficient moves out there because it requires a minimal effort from you which leads to an enormous positive impact on the world, whether it be for combating world hunger, whether it be for conserving water, for cleaning the soil, for reducing energy consumption, for purifying the air, for physical health, for our mental health, for bringing back wildlife, for living a more sustainable lifestyle, and for ending the animal holocaust of course. And if you want a deeper analysis on that, I'll have my video titled 5 Ways Veganism Can Save the World on the link down below. The real thing to do is omnivorous diets, and I think this is one of the things that we proved today in this conversation. The om omnivorous diet is like a, a natural healthy thing. You can do a vegan diet though, you can do it right. According to everything he was showing me today, and I believe this too, if you're just doing it correctly, if you monitor your nutrient levels, mm -hmm. you take, you know, vitamin B12 supplement, which is something he advocates. I was like, that makes sense to me. But I don't believe that means bad for you. Okay, so the omnivorous diet is not a natural or healthy thing. This is a huge myth. Omnivores are animals that feed on animal tissue and plants. Whereas herbivores are animals that exclusively feed on plants. Humans are currently behavioral omnivores, but are biological herbivores. So that means we are natural herbivores and artificial omnivores. This chart right here breaks down that myth. It is a summary from an article written by Dr. Milton Mills. If your mouth opening is small compared to your head size, you are a herbivore. If it's large, you are an omnivore or a carnivore. If your stomach pH is 4 to 5, then you are a herbivore. If it's less than 1, then you have the same stomach acidity as a carnivore or omnivore. If your small intestines are 10 to 12 times the size of your body length, then you are a herbivore. If it's 4 to 6 times the length, 
then you are a omnivore or a carnivore. I can go through this whole thing, but there's loads and loads of information in here, so it's worth screenshotting this and reading it all the way through so that there's no confusion and that human beings are 100% biological herbivores. Moreover, given that we are meant to be herbivores, that only means that meat is not meant to be digested by our human bodies. Of course, we can utilize meat for survival, but we don't eat to survive. We eat meat for pleasure, for comfort, and convenience. I mean, it's 2020, guys. It should be obvious by now, given the vast amount of research, that animal protein is not good for the human body in the long run. But if you really need me to spell it out for you, WebMD states that meat increases the chances of cancer, heart diseases, increases fatality, causes respiratory diseases, neurodegenerate diseases, mental disorders, and more dangers that are being discovered every year through scientific studies. I think Joe Rogan is living about 20 years in the past where these uh, studies were not so prevalent. So for someone that does DMT, I think it's time to uh, wake up, Joe. But I don't believe that meat's bad for you. Yeah, people yeah. have been eating meat since the beginning of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how we became people. Yeah. And literally one of the primary theories for why the human brain got so big so quick was that they we started, started hunting, we had more yeah. access to protein because we were cooking things with fire. And we, we learned how to hunt better because we, our brains kept yeah. growing as we're just figuring out. Number one, we ate meat to survive just like a lion eats meat to survive. So when we we're in, you know, something like the Ice Age, we had to actually eat meat so we don't risk going extinct as a species and that tradition probably got passed down. I don't know. But today we cannot use that excuse because we currently eat meat for pleasure, not for survival. Number two, we have also been murdering and raping and torturing each other since the beginning of time. We've been passing that tradition down. So what do you think is going to happen if you kill someone right now and you went to court and tried to justify it to the judge? Oh, but your honor, we've been doing it since the beginning of time. The lion does it too, so, so why can't I? It's it's natural. Number three, there are so many carnivores out there that eat a lot more protein than we do and they have been doing so throughout their evolutionary history, yet they don't have as high intellects as the human brain. In fact, monkeys and pigs are among the smartest animals besides humans, and they eat mostly vegetation. Elephants, gorillas, and rhinos are the largest land animals, and what do they eat? Yeah, grass. There is absolutely no hard proof that meat eating caused higher intelligence in humans. Sure, there are articles that suggest that they did, but they are suggesting a theory, not a fact. So we cannot use an unproven theory to make excuses about why we should feel better about eating this unnatural food. I also find it interesting how people are so quick to bring up the evolution theory that meat was the cause for our increased brain sciences throughout evolution, but they never want to bring up the other equally viable evolution theory that psilocybin mushrooms were the cause of our increased brain sizes. Mycologist Paul Stamets believes in this theory and claims that psilocybin substitutes serotonin. It becomes a better neurotransmitter, it causes new neurons to form and new pathways of knowledge. And I can go on and on about that as well, but the point is that, you know, Joe's a smart guy, but I think he is promoting way too much inconsistent information throughout his podcast, and it's really damaging the progress of education. So I will leave you with that food for thought, and let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and I will see you next time, my friends, and you Joe Rogan fans that stumbled upon this video. Chaos out.